Thank you, Nipen, and good morning, evening to friends across the globe. As an, as an IIT Bombay alumnus, I am actually proud to be standing here. I'm actually proud to be standing here and sharing this platform with other distinguished guests from the mining industry. Having seen and tackled mining through the prism of a service provider, an entrepreneur, and as an operator, I'm actually quite excited to share my views today on the technology uh, in mining sector. However, how best to describe mining? That was the first question I posed to myself. The way I see it, it is the only industry where you move 99% of waste to collect 0.5% of metal and still make copious amount of money. Folks, that is copper mining for you. If that hasn't sunk in yet, to give you true scale of events, last year alone, Western Australia moved 920 million tons of iron ore through our ports. That is a staggering 39% of global iron ore supply. We do like it big in the mining. Now, lots of fun facts. 44 people died globally in 2020 in the mining industry. Still an inherently risky business. We clearly haven't moved people away from harm's way. On a sustainability front, folks who probably don't know what uh, tailing dams are, um, effectively, it's, it's a waste pond that's created in every mining operation. So on average, a single tailing dam failure has the potential to write off one third of your market capitalization. That's huge. It is the single biggest risk um, that a mining organization would have on their balance sheets. On the decarbonization front, mining is responsible for 4 to 7% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And if we include scope three numbers, it bumps up to 28%. Last but not the least, um, data and equipment. There can't be a mining chapter or a mining presentation without talking about the dump trucks. These are huge dump trucks, uh, big machinery uh, with a payload of around 400, uh, 400 tons. Um, in the last few years, we've been capturing innate amount of data in every part of our value chain, but we're still not good at making best use of enabling it to make quick decisions. Now, you guys must be wondering, I've played out the doomsday story, but that's not my point. To me, this presents the landscape of opportunity that technology presents within the mining sector. Now, to summarize it again, Technology will play a central role in making mining operations more efficient, more productive, safer, and sustainable by utilizing and connecting data across the value chain. Now, I keep referring to this value chain, but not, I'm not sure if a lot of us actually understand what this value chain is. So quite simply, starts with exploration planning. We kind of call it PIT and then goes all the way to the port. So effectively, we can take material from pit all the way to the port through exploration planning, extraction, processing, and um, then moving or through either train or, or through our ports. To delve further, let us touch on the mining value chain and understand the burning need for the technology-driven uh, change. Now, exploration and planning by itself um, let me talk about exploration first. It's basically drilling intensive. And exploration drilling is nothing but 60 to 70% labor, and the remaining component is equipment. Now, that's interesting. Almost a right case for drilling automation, as well as moving people away from harm's way. Mine planning, on the other hand, is static, um, with little to no change or chance of updating it in real time. Different beast altogether, in my view. Extraction, on the other hand, is a different story, very heavily reliant on dump trucks. Trucks, in my view, will actually be the epicenter of future mining innovation. There are two problems that we're trying to solve there. One, um, for the folks who don't know, 60 to 70% of mining scope one, scope two emissions stem from these dump trucks. So yeah, there is a mandate to actually reduce the emissions. Secondly, because they are the epicenter of most of the mining activity, they are a right case for equipment automation. However, 
what technology stack should sit on the truck is actually a big question. Um, trucks in the present day and age are actually speaking to each other through different types of uh, uh, events and modeling and dispatch logic to make it even more to make it even more efficient. The question is actually quite live and vivid about what trucks, what technology stack should be going on the truck. And if we can maintain the same payload, and if we can reduce emissions either by uh, electrifying these trucks or perhaps even using different means um, of fueling these trucks or different commodities to actually fuel these trucks, perhaps hydrogen in future. That's, that's, that's the question that mining industry has been posed as of present. Um, some bigger miners have actually used electrified trucks or actually beginning to use electrified as well as automated trucks across their operations. Moving on, um, if we take a bigger look at the processing uh, part of the value chain, then equipment availability, reliability is a key driving factor here. Um, IoT sensing as well as uh, predictive, prescriptive uh, maintenance is bound to play a huge role in the processing part of the value chain. To summarize, I see several technology themes emerging out of the changes to the value chain. To delve further, for me, data science, IoT, AI, machine learning will, will actually replace all the outdated methods that involve manual intensive labor as well as inspection within the mining, mining value chain. Now, this spreads from looking at an on-site geologist all the way to a maintenance operator in the further down the value chain. The other theme that's emerging, which I'm quite passionate about, is pure sciences are going to play a mainstream role in actually making that impact and change. Um, the sustainability aspects have been questioned a lot. So the pure sciences are actually converging with information technology. This digitization of pure sciences and pure technical fields happening that has actually been representative of the major change happening within the mining industry. Equipment automation is rampant, as I've said. Um, it's happening across the value chain from drills to trucks to trains. The other interesting situation that's emerging out of all of this is there's a lot of point-based solutions um, that mining industry has been looking at. However, with all equipment automation, as well as sciences and IoT and uh, machine learning playing a major role, I see that's moving over to system-based solutions where there'll be better integration across the value chains and data will be able to flow from one point to another. Then the billion dollar question, what are the future skills that we'll need in the mining? Now, the way I see it, the data science aspect uh, is, is become pretty big. The future mining engineers will actually be data scientists as opposed to mining engineers. Sustainability is at the forefront and it is bound to make and drive technology changes. Now, as a professional who started in the oil and gas industry, um, I, I, I ask these questions to myself. Are we in this alone? Are we in this alone? Can we not drop parallels with the oil and gas industry, aviation, or perhaps even manufacturing industry? Can we not collaborate with suppliers and other like-minded operators to actually go through this transformation? Hmm, interesting thought. I guess to answer this, we perhaps need to understand the current and future state of technology in mining. And in my view, a perfect segue into our first speaker, Michelle Ash. Now, Michelle probably needs no introduction. Michelle Ash is the CEO of Deso Systems Geovia. She's made significant contributions to the mining sector with a focus on innovation strategy, technology, and digital transformation. Highly passionate about mining and the natural resources industry, Michelle remains focused on helping mining to evolve through digital transformation and the 3D experience platform to help deliver sustainable solutions to the sector. As the chair of the Global Mining Guidelines Group, GMG, Michelle has contributed to develop best practices and guidelines for the implementation of technology and socially enabled changes in the mining industry. She's also, a board, she's also on the board of several startups and industry boards in Canada and Australia. 
Previously, she was Chief Innovation Officer at Barrick Gold Corporation, where she oversaw the company's innovation program, looking both at how innovation can drive productivity in the existing business, as well as how it can be harnessed to deliver alternate business models. Michelle was named to the 2016 list of 100 Global Inspiration Women, Inspirational Women in Mining by The Mining in UK, and won the Technology Innovator of the Year Award at the Mines and Technology in 2019. She holds a degree in civil engineering and an executive MBA from the Melbourne Business School, as well as a degree in psychology from Deakin University. Now, without further ado, I hand it over to Michelle to take us through the current and future state of mind. 